Assalamu alaikum. I am Dariam Sheikh, junior year student at the Department of Computer Systems Engineering, Mehran University, Jamshuru. I welcome you all here in this very first session of Tech Today series, which is organized by uh, Student Ambassadors Club, Mehran University, Jamshuru, in the collaboration of MLSA Lahore. And this session, which is titled as Dive into the Fundamentals of Azure Cloud Computing, we will cover we will cover the cloud computing and its benefits we will then cover what is microsoft azure later we will discuss some cloud deployment models which are used by microsoft azure later we will discuss the cloud service models and at last we will work on azure portal and we will create and deploy the virtual machine so before proceeding with cloud computing and its benefits, we should know what is cloud. So cloud is simply the collection of data centers where data can be stored and applications can be hosted and the users can uh, utilize various applications and services which the cloud, server, uh, cloud providers provide them. So cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet, which enables faster innovation, flexibility of resources and economic advantages. Or you can say it is the ability to store the data on servers, access it for use from anywhere in the world through the internet. You can also uh, understand cloud computing as it is the on-demand availability of computer system resources like the uh, storage of data and the computing power without being directly managed by the users. All right. Even the security and infrastructure issues are all handled by the cloud service providers. Now let's discuss the benefits of cloud computing. So there are various benefits of cloud computing. Some of them are listed here, like the high availability, scalability, elasticity, agility, and the disaster recovery. Now we'll discuss them one by one. The first one is the high availability. Now the cloud service providers will make the cloud-based applications available for your use with no downtime, irrespective of the problems that occur inside the data center. The second one is scalability. Now scalability refers to the ability for increasing or decreasing the resources which are required to meet the changing demands of the users. Now it can also refer to like increasing or the workload with existing hardware resources or uh, now you you might be thinking what can be scale uh, what can be scaled so uh, the data storage capacity or the computing power can all be scaled uh, using the cloud computing infrastructure and this is scaling can be done with a no uh, no uh, uh, time all right means this can be done very quickly then the third one is elasticity. It refers to systems ability through which the system can grow or shrink dynamically in response of the changing workload demands. Now the elastic system is that which can automatically adapt to match the resources with the demand of the user as close as possible. The fourth one is agility. Uh, agility is the ability to rapidly develop uh, test or launch your software applications in response to the sudden changes that occur inside your organization. Now, cloud agility allows the businesses to focus on uh, the prioritized issues like that of the uh, analysis or security issues instead of uh, maintaining the resources. Then we have disaster recovery. Uh, Cloud-based services provide quick data recovery for all kinds of emergency scenarios. They can occur due to the natural disasters or the power outages. Now let's discuss what is Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft Azure is a cloud computing platform that is used for several cloud-based functionalities. These functionalities can be building, testing, deployment, or management of your services or applications with the help of data centers that are directly managed by Microsoft. Furthermore, Microsoft is that cloud-based platform which is trusted by 95%. I say 95% of the Fortune 500 companies. And it is, uh, and it is that 
cloud computing platform which uh, on which 1 billion us dollars are invested per year so that to secure and protect the customer's data from all kinds of cyber threats so that it can provide its users the best user experience furthermore uh, microsoft azure provides the solutions to its users like the saas ias and pass now don't worry about these terms right here we will discuss them in a little while uh, Microsoft Azure also supports several third party tools along with that of Microsoft specific. Now let's discuss cloud deployment models. So cloud deployment model actually defines where are the servers placed uh, and uh, who is actually managing them. And it also defines how the infrastructure will look like which you're using and the services which you require will be provided to you or you have to build them yourself. So let's understand this uh, cloud deployment models using an example of website building as there are several ways for creating or building a website or web application like some of the developers choose to develop a website using uh, some basic tools like html css javascript and they uh, connect their website to, uh, with a reliable database and they uh, use some libraries so the, uh, for adding some extra functionalities uh, same goes with uh, cloud deployment models like uh, so different users uh, use different cloud models according to their requirements. All right, so we are having five cloud deployment models, among them three of which are used by Microsoft Azure. We will discuss them one by one. So the first one is public cloud model. Public cloud model is actually uh, uh, that cloud model where the cloud resources like the servers storage are owned and operated by the third party cloud service provider like the Microsoft and they are delivered through secure internet connection. Now example of this can be Microsoft Azure. And uh, in this cloud model, all the hardware, software and the infrastructure are all managed by the cloud service provider as I told and the organization share the resources among themselves like the hardware storage and the network devices now let's understand public cloud model using this image here you can see that there are three websites the car e-commerce website the travel website and the text website all right and the left hand side shows you the cloud service provider which provides you various services like databases and application servers so in this figure we can see that all these three websites use the same resources which are provided to them by the cloud service provider and if you can see here it is written pay as you go now this term means that you will only pay means the uh, the developers of these websites the developers of these websites will pay for only the resources they require they use all right they will not pay for all the hardware or all the uh, resources and services which are provided by the cloud service provider now public cloud is advantageous because the whole hardware or software is not purchased by the uh, users or the customers uh, also the cloud service provider handles the management and maintenance or, and the resources are available to the users on demand whenever they require uh, by the cloud service provider. The second one is uh, private cloud model. So in this cloud model, actually it is comprised of computing resources and services that are used specifically by one business or organization. Now I have written example here ICPC that is information and communication processing center of our university. Uh, it, uh, it is just like the pr private cloud model where all the resources and services provided to the university are dedicated for our university only. All right. So furthermore, uh, you can say that private cloud can physically exist at the company's on site data center, as I told you, like the ICPC. And in this case, all the services, hardware, the infrastructure are all dedicated to work for that particular organization. And it is maintained by that organization on a private network. 
Now you can see in this uh, figure that all these uh, websites which we discussed in the previous slide use separate resources. All right, these resources are not shared among these websites. So in this way, private cloud model is advantageous because uh, it provides more scalability as compared to the on-premises infrastructure, and it also provides high privacy and because the resources are here not shared among the users. The third one is the hybrid cloud model. So the hybrid cloud model is the combination of a private cloud and the public cloud model. In this cloud model, it allows the users to move the data and applications between the two environments. Here, two environments means the private environment and the public environment. All right, so the creation of hybrid cloud model simply means that an organization is using a public cloud, but it also owns some of on-premises systems and hardware. And when both of them are connected to work as a single system, it forms a hybrid cloud. So many of the organizations for protection of their data and for security requirements, they run their critical applications on-premises whereas the rest of all the computations are performed on the public cloud. Now this can be seen in the figure from here that the car e-commerce website, which has two services, new car service and the used car service. Now new car service utilizes the resources from the private network. Now this can be because the new cars might not be released in the market or they might be released but not registered yet. So their data should be uh, saved or stored on a private network. All right, whereas the used car services require, uh, sorry, utilize the uh, data or the resources from the public network. This might be because the used cars are already released in the market and uh, they are they might be registered to the specific users as well. So now we have the question for the audience that which cloud deployment model should be used? Can anyone answer this question? You may uh, write the answer of this question in the chat box. All right, the one answer has came that hybrid cloud model. Anyone else? No one? Because both of combination service hybrid is better. All right. So let me answer this question. Actually, uh, this uh, totally depends on our requirements. The, if we are owning an organization or we want to work for an organization, then if we want our data for our employees or the customers to be uh, secured and protected from other organizations, then we will go for the private cloud model. All right, and if you're working for a project for a simple project that is for ourselves, which is assigned to us. And if we lack some of the resources in our personal computer, then we should go for the public cloud model for gaining some of the resources or the services. But if we want the uh, functionalities of both the public cloud and the private cloud, then we should go for the hybrid cloud. I hope you, you would have understood it. Then we have cloud service models. Now cloud service model simply defines which layer of service will be managed by the user and what level of service will be managed by the cloud service provider. We have three uh, cloud service models that are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. In short, they are called as IaaS, PaaS and SaaS. Now let's discuss them one by one. So the first one is infrastructure as a service. This is a service that offers essential compute, storage, networking, resources on demand on pay-as-you-go basis. 
pay as you go. I have discussed it earlier that it means you will pay for what you require, for, for what you utilize among all the resources that are provided by the cloud service provider. Now in this service model, you are not responsible for connecting the servers to the network or placing the servers inside the data centers. You are responsible for the data you use and how you access it and the applications that you create or deploy, etc. Now this can be seen from this uh, table or you can say uh, image where infrastructure as a service is written on first, then platform as a service, and then software as a service. Here the green color shows what is managed by you, and blue color shows what is managed by the cloud service provider. So, so we have discussed so far infrastructure as a service. So here, the data that you are uh, utilizing and the access and the access of the data, the applications, uh, that you are creating or deploying over the cloud and the runtime environment, also the operating system and virtual machines are all uh, managed by the users. Whereas the computation and the networking devices and the storage uh, devices or the other storage uh, functionalities or services are provided to you and they are managed by the cloud provider, all right? Then we have platform as a service. Now this service provides the environment for building, testing, and deployment of software applications without focusing or managing the underlying infrastructure. All right, now you don't have to manage also the in installation or maintenance of the cloud platform. It provides you with even more functionalities as compared to the infrastructure as a service. All right, this can be seen again from the same uh, image here. You can uh, here you have to manage the data and its access and the applications that you are working on. Rest of the services and resources will all be pro, uh, managed and maintained by the cloud provider. All right. And the third one is software as a service. This service allows the users to connect to and use the cloud-based applications over the internet. Now, it provides you with even more uh, functionalities or you can say uh, even more level of abstraction as compared to both of the first two services. Because here, uh, almost all of the services are provided to you and they are managed and maintained by the cloud service provider like the Microsoft. For example, if you're using a SaaS MySQL database. So here you only have to care about the data, its operations, its placement, etc. You don't have to worry about the creation or installation of a virtual machine and the installation of MySQL. These all things are handled by the cloud service provider. Now this can be seen again from the same image where you have to handle the data and its access. Rest of all the resources and the services are provided to you by cloud provider. All right. Now there is a famous proverb, all work, no play, makes Jack a dull boy. So let's not make Jack a dull boy and let's work on Azure portal. What you have to do, you have to type this URL inside your favorite browser, preferably Microsoft Edge and uh, you have to sign up there like I have already opened it. You will type on your browsers. Once you open the Azure portal, then it will ask you for sign up. All right. Now there are uh, several ways for creating the account on Azure. Like uh, there are three to four ways. Uh, you can create uh, Azure for student account where 
they will require your universe uh, Microsoft email that is given to you by university. Also, there is another way of creating an account like that. Uh, there is the facility of free Azure account. And another one is the paid account where you have to give the uh, credit card information so that they can uh, deduct your credits accordingly. Yes. Uh, your screen is not being shared actually. Sorry? Your screen is not being shared. Uh, shared. Yes. Like, yes, I am sharing it. Would it would be better like, if you are uh, doing this and you're sharing it with anyone. We would be able to understand more. All right, all right. Thank you. Actually, I have already signed up with my uh, Azure portal, so um, it will display like this somewhat. Somewhat like this. Is it visible? Is this screen visible now? Yes, visible now. I have opened uh, Azure portal. So let's introduce you with Azure portal. Uh, this is the home page of Azure portal, you can see. We are uh, in this first row, we are having the Azure services, like uh, all the services, most of them are displayed here and some of them are hidden, uh, which can be viewed from this more services option. Uh, these are the services which are provided by Microsoft Azure that you can use uh, according to your subscription of uh, according to the subscription of your account. All right. Then we have here uh, the navigate where from we are having different options here, like the subscriptions, resource groups, and all resources and dashboard. Uh, now, uh, from subscriptions, you can uh, view your subscription. This will display the subscription according to your account. If you are having account for students, then it will display Azure for students account. And from here, resource groups, uh, you will see the resources which reside inside uh, the resource groups that you have created. Now, resource group, you can understand, is like a folder which uh, in our normal file system where several files are placed inside it. A uh, resource group is like the container which contains several resources inside it, all right? And all these resources can be viewed from here. And in the dashboard, you can also, uh, it also displays several uh, services and uh, resources which you have created or recently used. Then we have the third row which displays several tools. Uh, you can uh, use them quick uh, from here and uh, whenever you require. Then we have this as a search box here, where from you can search any resource or service, or you want to read a document regarding any service or resource, you can type it here. This is the cloud shell, which is just like the terminal, which we use in our PCs. And, and this one is the option for directories or subscriptions where from you can switch among the directories or you can uh, uh, change among uh, you can see your subscriptions uh, this is the notification icon which uh, gives you the information or your status update and these are the setting options from here you can uh, change your directories again you can change the appearance of Azure portal, you can change the language or region, and there are several other options you can explore. This is the option for help and support. Uh, you can ask uh, any question or uh, you want to clear a confusion, you can put a question uh, from this option in, to the Azure community, and you can check your Azure service issues from this option. Later, we have explore Azure documentations where you can explore different documentations regarding different services and resources of Azure. And likewise, we are having a help and support button for uh, if you are stuck somewhere. This is the option for sending feedback to Microsoft for uh, you can tell them about your experience of Azure portal. And this one is the option for your information, this one. 
where you can uh, view your profile or you can change your password, you can view your bill, etc. This is the menu. Uh, uh, this plus sign shows you can create a resource from here. Home is the same as we discussed. And all services, uh, actually here, all the services are categorized into different categories and uh, featured are listed here. And these are some of the trainings from Microsoft that you can go through whenever you require or whenever you feel free. All right, now let's... Uh, go back to home and now let's create and deploy a virtual machine for that we need to first create a resource group from here we will create a resource group you'll uh, click on this create button then this kind of window will appear here the subscription will already be selected according to your account and I am having my student ambassadors account uh, signed up here. So uh, Visual Studio Enterprise subscription is already selected. And then you will type here the resource group name. For example, I am creating a resource with the name Cloud01. And from here, you will select the region. The region is basically the uh, area where you want to keep your resource group. So I'll select US East US. Then you'll simply review, uh, press on this review and create button. After you can, uh, after you see that the validation has passed, you can simply create, uh, sorry, press on this create button. It will create a resource group for you. So here the notification has arrived that the resource group has been created with the name Cloud01. And this can be seen from here as well. Now for creating a virtual machine, you'll open this resource group and you, you have to press this create button. Now from these categories, which I showed you earlier, you'll select the compute category and you'll select the virtual machine from here. Now we are doing this so that to demonstrate IaaS as I discussed earlier. So here in the basic information, we have to uh, give some uh, basic uh, details like uh, the uh, virtual machine name. For example, I am giving it the name test VM. Test VM. All right and the region is already selected here then from availability options we will select the availability zones availability zone now availability zones are physically the separate data centers within the same region they are physically separate data centers in the same region and where uh, each data center is equipped with independent power and networking these availability zones are used for protection against the downtime. All right. Now, for availability zone, we are having three availability zones. I'll select the second one. Then you can select the uh, image for your virtual machine. I'll select Windows 10 Pro, which is already selected. And then we'll select the size of virtual machine. This one is fine. Uh, you can see various sizes from here. Here we have different sizes for a virtual machine. You can select which you want. I'll select this one. Then we have we have to type here the username like testing VM and you have to type your password here uh, 
confirm your password. And then you have to select your inbound ports. Here it is already selected RDP, that is Remote Desktop Protocol. You will then check on this I confirm I have an eligible Windows 10 license. We will check on this option. And so here the basic information has been all completed. The rest of these tabs will remain same. I mean, we will not uh, modify these because we will let them to be as the default. All right, like the, this type will be the premium. Uh, SSD and the uh, encryption type will be as it is and the remaining like network and networking options will remain same as it will uh, the subnet is already created for you by uh, Microsoft Azure itself and all these settings will remain same we will not change them then we have to simply press this review and create button It will check for validation. Now, once the validation has been passed, you can review your uh, settings from here. All right. Then you can simply uh, press on this create button to create a virtual machine. You can see that it is showing our status here. Deployment is in progress. Let's wait until it is complete. It might take a few more minutes. So here the deployment is complete. Now we will check that whether the virtual machine is really working or not. So we will go to resource from here. We'll press the, press the go to resource button. 
Here all the details of your virtual machine are displayed. You'll now connect this to uh, your computer using the RDP port. For this, I am using remote desktop, Microsoft remote desktop. Now from here, you have to press this add button, select PCs, and you have to type the IP address which is given to you, this one. This is the IP address which will you which you will use here. It is 20.84.89.169. Now you will be having a different IP address, but for me, this is uh, which I have entered here. You will save the settings. Press this option, it will connect. Now you have to type the username, like I have given while creating the virtual machine, I have given testing VM. And you will enter the password. Press connect. So this is the virtual machine. I have taken uh, the image as of Windows 10 Pro. So it is displaying here. I hope it is visible to you. Now you'll accept all these privacy policies and the agreements. So here is your Windows 10 virtual machine. All right, so this was all about the creation and deployment of virtual machine. I hope you have understood it. Now, one additional thing that you must remember is that once you are done with creation or deployment of your resources, like the databases or your virtual machines, one important thing that you should remember is that uh, once you are done with everything, you should either shut down your virtual machines or you should delete your resource groups so that you can save your credits, all right? So we should first disconnect it. And now we will uh, simply uh, delete these resource groups. All right. We will go inside this Cloud01 resource group, which we have created before creation of virtual machine. Here is the option of delete resource group. Uh, when you cl uh, click on this option, it will ask you to type the resource group name that is cloud01. Simply copy this, paste it here. And once you press this delete button, all the resources inside this resource group will be deleted and this is the irreversible process means you won't be able to access them or use them uh, after you delete them all right so let's delete it by doing this actually you will save your uh, credits which are remaining in your account So it's showing it's deleting resource group. It will take some time. So let's wind up this session. Once it is deleted, I'll show you again. All right.
So this was all about the session. I hope you have understood the concepts and how we create and deploy the virtual machine. If you find anything confusing or you have any question, you can type in the message box. If you have any question regarding any of the concept we uh, understood before uh, deploying and creating virtual machine, or you have any question regarding the Azure portal, you can ask it uh, by typing it in the chat box. Anil Kumar, can we create account on personal email? Yes, you can, uh, but you will uh, have to uh, insert your uh, credit card information, I think, accordingly. Then you will uh, get the subscription for usage of your resources and services that are provided to you by Microsoft Azure. I hope it is clear. Anyone else? Yes, Azure has free subscription for free accounts. Like Azure for students, or uh, there is a free account where you get uh, $200, credits of $200. Any other question? Yes, the duration of Azure free account is uh, the credits duration is of uh, one year, that is 12 months. Uh, and for
Hello, am I audible? Am I audible? Please type in the message box. All right, thank you. So this was all about the session. And I thank you all for attending this session, for your time and for your presence. And I special thanks for all the senior MLSAs who have supported till now. Uh, thank you all. I hope you have enjoyed this session or you have uh, understood some of the concepts. If not all, then some of the concepts uh, from today's session. And another important thing that uh, if you are going to uh, give the Microsoft examination for certification examination for uh, Azure fundamentals that is AZ 900. So this session could be helpful for you as uh, module one was almost covered in this session. There are total five modules in that uh, that you, you need to cover inside uh, the preparation of that examination and module one was almost covered here. So if you uh, play the recording of this session and practice it, you can, I think, uh, uh, prepare for your examination, all right? Yes, the recording will be shared with you once uh, the session ends. It will be shared to you by our uh, Student Ambassador Club. Moise Akhtar, second session, I think it's probably tomorrow, which will be conducted by one of our colleagues, Hina, and she'll proceed with the web uh, uh, creation and deployment of web application using some of uh, app services that are given by Azure portal again. And I hope that is also going to be a very good session, very informative session. I encourage you to attend that uh, if you want to. Uh, excel your knowledge about Azure. It is requested to please fill the feedback form which is shared with you all inside the meeting chat so that we can get your reviews and suggestions about this session. Thank you everyone for your cooperation, for your presence. If you want to uh, ask any other question or you want to discuss something, you can ask, you are free to do so. But if not, then we'll end the meeting.
Anila, AWS and Azure are both cloud platforms. Basically, Azure is provided to you by Microsoft Corporation, whereas AWS is the Amazon Web Services, which is also a cloud platform given to you by Amazon. Both of them are uh, really brilliant cloud platforms, but they are having different uh, you know, features and they are, I think both of them are really good to use with uh, uh, good graphical interfaces. Like you can use both of them, but it depends on the users and uh, and their requirements actually, and whether they are using AWS or whether they are using Microsoft Azure. I hope I have answered your question. Uh, here's a question how we are eligible for giving free exam in Microsoft Azure so generally if we see we are not able to give the free exams of Microsoft but they they give some of you you can say um, trainings or sessions or you can say they ask you to complete certain learning paths after that they give you the voucher and through that voucher or after completing their requirements, like uh, they say to attend a two days training or they ask you to complete a learning path, uh, then after you have done that, then they uh, give you a voucher through which you can give a free exam, uh, which will be in the uh, uh, their uh, criteria. Like if you are uh, completing two days training as these are going to be held in the near future if you are completely uh, completely attending uh, those trainings then after that they'll email you uh, in which they'll give you the voucher of free exam anila it depends on you whether you want to or you or you are not but you can do a lot of things being a web developer on azure so if there are no further questions we should end the meeting here. Thank you everyone for your patience, for your cooperation and your presence. I hope you might have understood, if not all, then at least some from this session. Thank you.